What's on your mind? Shy. There's one over here. Um, my name is George Young. Uh, Say your first name again. My name is George Young. George uh, Actually, uh, I'm not working. Uh, I filed for patents in 1999-2000, but the uh, U.S. patents still hold my patents. So basically, I, can do, I cannot do anything. Uh, and uh, much worse, I got uh, four big lawsuits in less than 11 years. So far, I'm a loser. My question is Did about- Did you say a lawsuit? Uh, I, yeah, I got four lawsuits. So far, I'm a loser. So I couldn't do anything. But uh, the consequence is, uh, if I cannot do anything, I cannot move forward. Yes. Nobody can yes. either. No winner. Mm. No winner. Because everybody is very concerned about the current uh, global economic crisis. Mm. This is really global mm -hmm. economic crisis. Mm. This global economic crisis uh, is caused by U.S. economic crisis. U.S. economic crisis is caused by financial crisis. Financial crisis is caused by mortgage crisis. Mortgage crisis is caused by we have more than 20 million illegal immigrants, illegal immigrants, because these low paid workers couldn't pay the mortgage. So uh, for my four lawsuits, I figured out the big, two big issues. One is the immigration issue, and the U.S. court totally lost the function to enforce immigration law. Another one is the sex tax law. Tax law. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, like uh, U.S. in United States, more than 50 percent public companies are resident that they wear. Mm -hmm. Most of them cheat on uh, state tax and local tax, even state tax. So my question is, uh, you, your opinion, if uh, we want to make an uh, economic recovery or whatever, we start to resolve these two big issues, can we make any movement? Do we make any movement on Yeah, on, on achievement. Well, that, that, that is, um, I guess I would have to accept. First of all, thank you for your, um, for your question and your, um, and your comment. I'm not sure I accept all of the premise that you offer for why we are in the pickle we're in. You're, you know that phrase, the pickle we're in, the state we're in, the troubles we're in um, right now. I'm, it, it, for me, it's hard, um, given what I see uh, in Massachusetts and, and around the country, to to reduce it quite as neatly as you do, respectfully, to, uh, to uh, uh, immigration and illegal immigration. But if the question is, um, uh, what is the fix um, for, the economic, uh, for the economic crisis, I don't think there is a the fix. I do think that there are, um, you know, it, it is more than a little puzzling. Um, uh, no, not, puzzling is not the right right word. It's more than a little frustrating that as much money as we have put into the financial uh, services industry and the financial inter industry generally has yielded as little um, uh, loosening of credit. Um, and the access to credit is a serious problem for businesses and consumers alike. But there is another um, issue uh, as well, which, um, which I think is more... Um, sort of in the culture of, uh, of business, and frankly, I see it a lot in government too, and that is this enormous pressure, and I saw it when I was in private industry at Coke and Texaco, to manage for the next quarter and to get the short-term um, uh, results, sometimes sacrificing the long-term interests of the, of the enterprise. And I say I see this in government as well because I think we have increasingly been governing for the next election cycle. Sometimes I said about my predecessor, predecessor uh, in, in uh, the governor's office, he would govern for the next news cycle, and not necessarily for, um, uh, in ways that served our long-term interests as a, uh, uh, as a community if there wasn't some short-term political gain. I think all of us are gonna have to start looking ahead and acting on what we see uh, uh, ahead, which is back to the central point I was trying to make here. But due respect to your question, I think I differ a little bit with the, with the premise. Yeah. So, hi, uh, my name is Omar, and I have a question. Say your first name again. Uh, Omar. Omar. Mm -hmm. uh, so with your, your, with your valuable insight and, and experience in Massachusetts, when Massachusetts went through some hard times, especially when DEC used to be a leading company and then, you know, had a problem. Yeah. Um, if you 
Arnie's not here, so um, when, when California goes back east and says we need a bailout pretty soon because we're running out of money, if, if President Obama calls you, what would you advise him to say to California? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Omar, next question. Uh, no, look, look, first of all, um, First of all, I, I support the stimulus efforts in the Congress uh, right now and have been working very closely with the Congress and the administration. I think, and I think most governors do, by the way, but not, uh, about, a, uh, not about a bailout. Um, it's really about what is uh, stimulative and what avoids uh, counter-stimulative um, forces. Our view has been, most governors' view, has been um, that, the, that the package ought to have at least three kinds of things in it. One is um, direct, stimulative, um, job-creating investment, particularly in infrastructure broadly defined. And that's for two reasons. One, our infrastructure is falling apart in this country. Roads, bridges, yes, but also um, broadband expansion, also uh, you, you know the, the, the whole movement uh, toward uh, health IT and so on, broadly defined uh, uh, infrastructure is enormously important. And by the way, it is public infrastructure, so it's not wrong for government to spend on those uh, uh, sorts of things. We've been starving our infrastructure all over the, uh, uh, the country for a long time. So that is at the top. And by the way, from everything I have seen of um, the opinions of economists across the political uh, spectrum, infrastructure spending is at the top of the list of stimulative spending. That's first. Second is uh, counter-cyclical support, meaning um, there are a host of programs, food stamps, um, Medicaid support for, uh, uh, for health care and so forth, there are a couple of key examples, where the demand goes up because the economy is crummy, but the ability of states to meet that demand is compromised because the economy is crummy. And so um, some help um, there. Um, which only the federal government uh, can supply, or frankly, we could supply, I suppose, at the state level by raising everybody's taxes. Doesn't quite sink. I saw your eyebrows go up when I, when I said that. But, um, uh, but some federal support there, I think, is, is helpful. And in the absence of that, by the way, then states become huge. Um, uh, states are, are laying off people like nobody's business which has its own drag on the stimulative effect you're trying to do in that first bucket. And then a third that we have been, some of us have been urging, and the House has, has responded, we were talking about this um, uh, beforehand, um, Sean and, and others, is some support for education, pre-K through higher ed. Um, not to expand programs, but so that we don't lose ground during the recession. Because you're in second grade, you don't sit out second grade until the recession's over. You get one chance in second grade. Um, and we need to be think. This is, this is back to a point I was making earlier about how we think about investment from a long-term point of view. The best investment for the long term for this country in the economy we are and are becoming is in, is in education. Um, so how do we get some help so we don't lose ground? We've been on this 15-year journey in Massachusetts. We don't want to break our, our momentum, even if we can't get to the next level as fast as we, we'd like. There's a fourth component, which is the tax um, uh, uh, package, and I'm, I'm not going to express an opinion on that. I think I get the politics of it, but those three uh, points, uh, those three buckets are, or categories, if you will, I think there is wide consensus among governors. Now, there are some governors who are willing to say that publicly, and there are others who are not. Um, and that's where politics comes in. And I'll just leave it at that. Who's got, yes? Okay. Tony Mazzapelli. Um, the population of Massachusetts is about the same as the San Francisco Bay Area, but here in the Bay Area, we have three very large Department of Energy labs. Two of them have uh, 8,000 workers doing very big science, including top uh, IT, top bioscience, uh, and, and this influences a lot of the venture capital, a lot of the research that goes in uh, companies like Hewlett Packard and, and the universities. Do you think places like Massachusetts should shoot for getting more labs, big labs like this, or do you think the universities and small players should go for the research? 
Well, I think, um, I think first of all, we get, um, we get a disproportionate share uh, of a bunch of things you care about. Like, uh, we get one out of every four uh, NIH, NIH dollars um, right now. How about that? And uh, <laughs> we, uh, we, we, we get, uh, we, have a, we have a whole host of, uh, of, uh, of research laboratories, actually many of them um, closely connected to the defense industry. Um, and that has been an economic uh, source for us. We have a, a new um, Windblade test facility, one of two that the DOE um, recently uh, uh, awarded that's going up in, in Charlestown. I think the other, is the other one in Texas, Pat? It's in, in, in Texas, right, in Corpus Christi. Um, and we'd like more. Obviously, we're, we've got to get in there and, and, uh, and ask for it because it's not going to come just because, you know, we're, uh, as the kids say, all that. Um, um, but, um, but also, I think, you know, these things are important um, in terms of their local uh, economic uh, impact and the vibrancy of the community of thought around them, just as here in the, uh, in the Bay Area. But we have to encourage, and I say this um, understanding my primary role as governor, we have to encourage a lot more collaboration across a whole lot of lines, including state lines, than we do even now. And I think a good deal of it happens um, uh, already, but we're going to have to do um, uh, more, of, uh, more of this. Um, and I think there's some opportunities, as, and there have been uh, some of those opportunities exploited as between uh, Massachusetts and, uh, and California, particularly the Bay Area. Do you want me to call on people, or do you want to? Whatever you want to do. So I'm, I'm yes, right here. Thank you, Governor Patrick. Sure. Uh, Junius Ho, I currently work at Palm, MIT alum. So you mentioned a, uh, that currently with the uncertain economy and positions like that, that it's very important to be forward thinking and to innovate and to be proactive. And I wholeheartedly agree with that if you look at the history of the Valley uh, around the burst of the bubble, the people that invested, the companies that invest the mm -hmm. most in people are the most successful now today. There's so, a but coming though, yeah. I, I can feel it, <laughs> well, yes. To this end, yeah. um, you also mentioned the tremendous wealth of talent in all the universities and research institutions in Massachusetts. And uh, although we all sit here today and Silicon Valley is the biggest sort of uh, poacher of this talent, how do you and your administration plan to sort of keep a lot of these, uh, you know, great minds in state and help further uh, the, the causes that you're working with? Well, thank you, thank you for the question. First of all, um, just the, uh, uh, I want to be absolutely clear. You're really good in Silicon Valley, but we have a lot of that talent at home, um, uh, too, and we hold on to it. There are things we can't compete with, you know, like January and February. <laughs> that's, that's a problem, right? But, um, but, but okay, so let's set that aside. Um, there are, there are, um, there are things um, that we can do and are trying uh, to do. And, and by the way, they are not all about government. They are um, mostly not about, uh, about government, but I have an opportunity to call attention to them and sort of use my convener uh, role as, uh, as governor. Um, so, for example, in the life sciences, there is a very clear, um, sort of personality that that cluster has. They're close to each other. They talk to each other all the time. They have, um, they have uh, uh, fora and, uh, and um, trade associations, if you will, that gather them uh, together uh, a lot. And we just got it to the next level by, by calling a lot of attention to it and rallying around a rather modest, actually. I mean, the $1 billion initiative is a third of what you did here in California. Um, but, um, but frankly, we learned from the experience in California to do some things differently and I think better. Um, and, uh, and that has helped. So it's got to kind of, it's got to kind of buzz around it. I mean, it's a, some of it's marketing, some of it's substance, but some of it is also marketing. The clean tech uh, sector is, a, is another. You, you've got a 15 year lead in terms of the image of California as being forward leaning around, around tech, clean tech. But in fact, our legislative framework is a whole lot better than yours. 
And it, no, 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 no. It's I, look. I, all I'm talking about is who's setting the bar where, right? We learned from California and from other um, jurisdictions, and frankly from Europe uh, as well, and moved that bar. Now somebody else, um, and I, frankly, and the federal government ought to step up and move that bar um, uh, uh, further. But that's where we are right now, and we have been trying to organize our burgeoning clean tech sector and create some, uh, uh, some um, uh, collaboration and some understanding of who is doing what, because it's a multifaceted sector, um, and some buzz uh, uh, around, uh, around that. IT is, um, you know, we, we have had a, um, uh, a depth in IT for a long, long time. But a whole lot of, uh, of people still think it, it's Route 128. It's not. I mean, did you know that we were one of the, what, two, three, second or third hubs for video gaming in the country? You knew that. That's because you're cool. OK. Maybe if, OK, all right. I was going to say, you wouldn't know that if you're over 50. Let me put it that way. But, but it's, a, you know, but here, here's the thing. We've got, we've got nearly 80 developers. We don't have a major publisher. And so the, they're here or out this way. Microsoft, I saw yesterday. So boy, the week is a blur. Right. Um, uh, yesterday, and, um, and I'm going to see um, Electronic Arts Friday, right? And uh, um, so, you know, we'd like to have, I'm not saying you've got to leave California, but um, a lot of the industry has a presence on both and uh, um, for those parts of the industry, and not, I don't mean just gaming, but the IT industry uh, uh, generally, um, we want you to think about having your East Coast present, presence in Massachusetts. So that, some of it is marketing. Some of it is very practical. Affordable housing is a huge issue, a huge issue. And there are opportunities in, um, in this recession, frankly, to recalibrate um, there. And we have looked at some strategies and are working on some strategies to try to do this around uh, workforce housing. There's some other things that are, you know, again, not directly about the industry or an industry, but are, but are important to the workforce. Um, the creative economy, um, you know, the cultural uh, offerings, important economically, enormously important to the, uh, 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 to this, you know, hip um, uh, uh, Population we're trying to uh, we're trying to retain, and frankly, um, what was the May program that they were talking about? We don't ask young people to stay in Massachusetts after they finish school. We don't do that. We don't. You know, I'm from the Midwest. You know, if you're new in the Midwest, you move into a neighborhood. I grew up in Chicago. Everybody brings a pie. Sometimes in the East, if you're new, you're the one expected to bring the pie. <laughs> Do you know, we have to, we, some of you from the East understand what I'm talking about? Okay, so we have to, we have to, um, we have to, we have to understand that um, extending our, our hand and showing welcome um, is actually economically important. Uh, as uh, as well as and serves our long term interests. Uh, you want me to do this? Okay, let me do a one, two, three, four, five, six. Are you going to set? You're gonna remember, remember your numbers? <laughs> three. You two, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. All right. You have to remember your numbers. Okay. Go ahead. Andres Perlionis from Hojan Tech. Nice to see you. Uh, Governor Patrick, congratulations. You are blessed with a fantastic mother. That saying about the poor being different from the broken mm. is absolutely profound. Mm. Now, there is also another saying, ain't fix it if it's not broken. Mm. So maybe we should take a look what is not broken about the economy. And just last week in Churchill Club, we had a genome-based economy proposal mm. because genomics is not broken at all. Mm. In fact, it's rising on both sides 
both in California and also in Massachusetts. And when I saw you, together with Mr. and Mrs. Broad Institute, with MIT, mm -hmm. I think we can do it, because here we have HP, an existing uh, hybrid computer yes. that is just announced, yes. which is poised for genome computation. And of course, in a genome-based economy, those in the Broad Institute mm -hmm. and other institutions like uh, University of Massachusetts, they are very heavily working on genomics. Yes. So we are all in one economy, east side or west side, and I think that with your talent, we can really put the two sides together. Well, thank you. That's a great comment. Did you, did you say you work for HP? <laughs> did you say you work for HP? Did I? No. No, because it sounded like an HP commercial there. For some, <laughs> but just a, just, a, just a part of it. But no, you're right. Not everything is wrong with his. I mean, that's what I meant when I said we have, in Massachusetts certainly, and I think in the, in the country um, generally, we have some certainly in Massachusetts, good economic bones. I think for us in particular in Massachusetts, and it may also be true of Northern California, but I don't pretend to um, be as familiar with all the conditions, a knowledge-based economy is our future. And uh, it doesn't mean that, um, uh, that it's the same solution everywhere in the country. It's a big country. Um, our, uh, our, we have agriculture, for example, in our... Uh, in our economy at, at home in Massachusetts, but not a very big part of the uh, economy. Our edge is going to be what's new. It's going to be ideas. It's going to be in innovation. And that has some implications, my point, about what kinds of things we call attention to today and invest in. A genome-based uh, economy, for, uh, for example, is a wonderful idea as long as you continue to cultivate the talent necessary to advance uh, that industry. And that, to me, has huge implications for education, uh, including public investment in education. Number two. You want to talk into my tie? I can bring this. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, first off, Governor, as a Boston native, welcome to uh, Red Sox Nation West. There it's you go. Good to have you here. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. They get, they get bigger crowds when they play out here than they do in uh, Fenway Park. <laughs> <laughs> my name's Andrew Duncan. I'm with Scale and Systems in, uh, in here in Palo Alto. Um, my question is specific. Applied technologies, where a lot of technology is now being shipping, and I think that that will continue to advance uh, with the downturn in the economy. Mm -hmm. And one of the areas for Boston is obviously medicine along with technology. Um, you talk about innovation a lot, very important word. Tom Daschle, in his book, there's really no mention of innovation. There's a lot of concerns about Cutler and others going into the administration and taking over the FDA and whatnot. So what's your, what is your view about that? Because medical industry is one of the area in technologies that our country is really great at, and we have a leadership position. So what is your view on where that goes? And my other question associated with that, what's your position on tort reform? Okay. Um uh, what's yours? <laughs> what's your position on tort reform? Okay. Um, no, no, you're all right. You're all right. You can ask me anything you want. I don't have to answer it, but uh, you can answer it. <laughs> you want. On the first uh, question, Andrew, I think. It, it sounded like you were asking me to offer an opinion about the uh, appointees or potential uh, appointees in some of these key um, positions. So I'm, I'm not going to go there, but let me, let me, let me talk around it. Um, because if the question uh, is in its nature, how do we assure that um, regulatory and oversight institutions also appreciate the importance to our economic future of, of innovation. I'm there. And by the way, so is the president. Um, I'm, very, I'm very convinced of, uh, uh, of that. Now, any you know, given applicant is going to complain that it does or doesn't go um, uh, fast enough. I mean, you know, I I'm, I'm, say, for example, I'm, and I am very personally committed to growing this clean tech uh, sector and alternative energy uh, field. <laughs> In, uh, in Massachusetts, but it doesn't mean I'm going to say you can cite whatever you want, wherever you want. We're still going to have to balance um, uh, interest. 
just have to be mindful of what, our, what it is we are trying to accomplish. This is back to the point about thinking uh, long term. Um, and I don't think it means that we say everything, nothing else matters except that long term um, vision. You still have to strike uh, a balance in competing interests, especially in my line of, uh, line of work, as a practical matter as well as I think just good policy. On the second question about, uh, about tort reform, you know, most people seem I find people mean a whole bunch of things by tort reform. If the question um, is um, about, well, forget about interpreting the question. Let me tell you what I think. What I think is that we ought to have um, as simple and direct ways and means for people to resolve disputes. I don't think that some of the proposals about how to do that are particularly constructive because they, they they, uh, they rub up against um, uh, the right that people have um, or wish they have to have a, uh, uh, a way to resolve their uh, disputes and to be comp compensated for real wrongs. Um, but there are some experiments out there uh, around alternative dispute resolution and, uh, and so forth and specialized courts, you know, um, uh, courts that are, that are dedicated to a particular field and so on, which are working pretty well. And I do think we should be moving in that, in that direction. Okay?